it's Ashley, and welcome to Day 9 of Trinity Stamps' 12 Days of Christmas. Today I will be making a banner. And the banner that I'm going to be making is going to have a Christmas card holding element to it. It's pretty cool. So to start out, I am going to be using some of our Trinity Stamps slimline papers. I'm going to be doing this in a kind of bluish turquoise color scheme. So I'm going to be using some papers from this one and the other one I will show you in a moment. So to start, I'm going to use my We Are Memory Keepers banner punch board. I'll go through this quick if you've never seen any of these punch boards before. So I'm taking my slimline paper and I'm figuring out how big I want it. So I'm going to do this one at three and a half inches. There's magnets on this, so once you put it down, your paper is going to stay put. Next, I'll go ahead and grab the blade that comes with this. It has a little knob that goes in the channel and then the blade that does the cutting. I like to hold it because I feel like I have a heavy hand. Um, sometimes I inadvertently move paper anyways. So, so that's how you do it. You just run it down each side. It's as easy as that. And then you can choose what side you want to use for your banner. Or you can make it double-sided too. That's an option. So now I'm going to be layering that with a pearlescent white paper, and I'm going to bring that down to three inches. So I'm just going to line that up, same method as before. Then I'm going to put the arm down, which will magnetize um, right down, and then I will go ahead and cut that. So then you'll want to go ahead and just repeat that whole process for as many banner banner pieces as you want. I'm going to be spelling out Jolly, so I have made five banners. So I'm just going to go ahead and adhere this one down here, and then I will show you how this punch board also creates the holes for you to string through to make it a complete banner. So this punch board has a little metal hole punch installed right on there. So you just line up your corner, punch it down to create your hole, and then flip it over and do the same thing. Now this piece of uh, banner I had already done and punched a hole in the um, outside of it, so that's why it looked like there was already a hole punch, but it didn't punch through to the inside because I had just put that on. Anyways, now I'm moving on to my letters. So I'm using our Marshmallow Alphabet set. And I've gone ahead and layered up each letter with three sheets of cardstock, three pieces of cardstock, just to give it a little bit more um, sturdiness since this will be kind of a decor piece. So next I'm going to be using some paper from this slimline paper pad, some of those blues in there I've used as well. And then I'm also going to be making some rosettes. I thought that would be a lot of fun to add some more dimension to this. And I'm going to use this rainbowy lined color. I thought that would be fun. So it's not just blue, it gives it a little punch. So if you've never made a rosette before, I will show you how here. So I've decided to score my paper at quarter inches all the way down. So you just score it down. You can use a score, a pal, whatever you have. I just like using my Fisker score blade. Then next you want to cut it to half of the width that you want your rosette to be. So I cut mine at a half inch because I want it to be one inch. And you'll see how that comes together. After you do that, then you accordion fold it the whole way down. It's a tedious process, but it turns out so cool and it's really not that hard. It's pretty mindless. See, then when I bring it all the way around, it, it's one inch. So then what you want to do is just take one of the little folded edges of it and put some glue on and attach that to the other side. It will look seamless. You won't notice that. I just like to hold it for a little bit to make sure that it's nice and tight. And this glue is pretty good. It, it holds really well. It, it held all of these. And as far as the length that this is, I like to keep it around 11 to 12 inches long and then accordion fold that whole length just because if it's any shorter than that, it gets kind of cumbersome and hard to uh, assemble together. So I stick with anywhere from 11 to 12 inches. So next I punched out a piece of paper that I knew was a little bit smaller than my rosette and I used some good old hot glue and put that down on there. You gotta kind of work quickly here. And then you wanna take your rosette, place it over the center of that, line it up, and then all at once, you want to squeeze it in and push it down. And just hold it for a couple seconds. 
and then you have your rosette. So I've gone ahead and done a couple more of these beforehand, all with the same paper. I love how they kind of all turn out a little bit different just depending on where I cut it. So next I'm going to kind of envision everything and how it's going to all lay out. So I have my word jolly and I have these rosettes. What I've settled on is adhering rosettes to every other banner. So the first one, the middle one, and the last one. And then I'm going to do something else on the, the two other ones. So I've gone ahead and used some two-sided foam adhesive for placing my letters on top of the rosettes. Since the rosettes are not always 100% even when you're looking straight at them, this foam helps kind of, um, helps there not be any problems. Um, where if you use just glue, it might want to pop up in certain spots. The foam takes that away. So I have all of those done, and now I'm going to work on the last two. And what I've decided I wanted to do was use some glitter paste and this snow stencil. I thought that would be fun just to kind of give it a different look, and it all will kind of come together in the end. So since I've already adhered the white to the pattern background, I don't want to necessarily get any of the glitter paste onto my um, pattern background. So I'm going to go ahead and just take some of this paper tape and cover the, the printed background. And if I, at first I was just going to kind of put it on the edges, but then I realized I should cover it the whole thing. So I kind of used more tape than I probably needed to, um, but I did end up getting it all covered. So I used some of this Bow Bunny um, glitter paste. I really like how fine the glitter is in it. It works really well for these smaller um, snow, snow holes. So I'm just going across it evenly, covering the little holes on each one of these banners. And this stuff dries pretty fast. So you, once you're done with this, you can take your um, stencil off and it will dry within a few minutes. It does by me anywhere. I live in Montana, so it's kind of dry. So maybe that's different if you live somewhere more humid. But um, I think the characteristic of this um, glitter gel is to be quick drying. So once I have that done, I actually take it off and I go back over it one more time on a different kind of switch up the angle and do it twice so I get even more snow on there. I always love the big reveal when you take the stencil off and see it all on there. It's, it's so fun. So the stencil is really easy to clean. You just need to wash it off with some warm water. Um, I did not do that yet because I was going back over it twice after it was dried. You could add a little bit of a heat tool to it, but you don't want to do too much of that. So I've gone ahead and finished that, did two layers of that. You can see what it looks like up close. It's a lot of fun. And I love how it gives it a different texture from the rosette ones. Um, it's just fun that they're not all the same. So now I'm going to do some foam adhesive and put my O and my other L on these two banners. Next I decided I wanted to add these cute little snowflake embellishments to my O and my L banner. So I just started hearing uh, one of the colors and then decided that I wanted to add all of the colors. So you will see what that looks like in just a moment. All right, so here is the banner all finished up. So next I'm going to take some of this Baker's Twine. I wanted to combine two different kinds. The one is kind of white and has silver string running through it. And then the other one is just white and blue, a blue that matches really well with these papers. So I'm stringing it through, and you can see how I'm going from the front to the back and then back through to the front, so the string doesn't cross the front of the banner. That's just how I wanted it to look for this. You could do it however you wanted, um, but that's how I did this one. So here is our banner, what it looks like. Oh, I'm not going to stop here. I wanted to do one more element to this whole thing. So we're all card makers. We love cards. We love getting cards. I love keeping cards forever. So what I thought would be fun was to turn this into a Christmas card holder with this with the banner all together. 
So what I'm going to do is I just cut some more baker's twine and I wanted to cut this one longer because I knew it was going to kind of drape down since the cards are heavy. Then I just found some ribbons that I had laying around that kind of coordinated with the colors in the banner and I'm just tying them on this baker's twine string and I'm not worrying about having one side be longer or shorter than the other side or, or I mean having them even. I'm okay if they're um one's longer than the other. So you can kind of see my idea coming together here, you know, kind of hanging together with both of these. I had tried to put the ribbon straight onto my banner string, but it was just looking too busy, and the banner wouldn't really sit very nice then with the string kind of hanging from, or the uh, ribbon kind of hanging from it. It kind of made everything not lay nice and flat. So I'm going to continue to tie ribbon all along this string. I end up with quite a bit, but you can kind of decide if, if you don't want as many. Maybe you don't want to hang as many cards. Um, each ribbon will hang two cards to, to kind of get an idea of how this will be. Okay, so I finished tying all my ribbons on. And I love how they just coordinated so well. I didn't think that they would, but they really do. So that will kind of hang, and I will show you when it's actually hung up how it all lays and looks with cards on it, too. So this is kind of the idea here, kind of what it will look like. The ribbon string will kind of drape down farther, and then the jolly one will be just slightly above it. So the last step in this whole project is to take some little mini clothespins here and adhere them to the bottom of the ribbons. And this is what will clip onto our cards. So it, they're just going to glue on right like that. I'm going to go back to my trusty old uh, hot glue gun to get that done. And I'm just going to end up doing a little, just a little strip of it, just the length that I need it to be. And then I will lay down my clothespin. And I'll go through this process with all the ribbon um, on both sides of each piece. Um, so each and every one has a little clothespin to hang a card from. All right, so here's our completed project, cards and all. So I went, just went ahead and tied the ends of my string to whatever you're going to use on this one. It was little nails. And then here's what it all looks like. So it's a fun little project, pretty easy. You can make it as easy as you want or as detailed as you want. It's up to you. Please be sure to check out Trinity Stamps YouTube page and our Facebook group, Imagination, Inspiration, and Conversation. If you like this video, also please be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more crafty fun and inspiration. And please come back tomorrow for Trinity Stamps day number 10 of our 12 days of Christmas. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.